Hi guys and welcome to another video. Uh, in today's video, well let's just say I need a bit of prevention because I have so many works in progress that, well for me, it's driving me nuts. <laughs> so I thought I would share some with you and in the comments below leave how many whips that you have, um, how many work in progress do you have at any one time or do you even just work on one project and if you do that then can you tell me a secret? So my phone may start ringing. Mm. I'll just I'll just cut the video if it starts ringing. My first project I would like to share with you is my Scraptastic Granny, and this was part of the Crochet Christmas Party for 2016. So it's now March 2017. So it's been on the go for a little while. But this project is sort of an in-between sort of project, and I don't I'm, I'm not really worried how long it takes me to complete it. It's just, but it's really nice to work on at the same time. So I'm using 8 ply, which is equivalent to a DK weight, and I, it's all 100% wool, and most of it, pretty much think all of it, is hand dyed by someone or another. Um, there's too many people to list, but yeah, there's lots. So it's probably about a metre and a half wide. I can't actually fit it all in. It's quite wide and this is how much I've done so far I can't reach I think it's too long to even fit in oh, there we go so there's lots of really pretty yarns in there some I've dyed myself uh, there's a green mint green one there I dyed that myself the pink one I dyed myself Oh, there's a yarn just there, the blue with the speckles. That is actually bought from a shop that wasn't a hand dyed or purchased from an indie dyer. But I think that might actually be the only one. The rest I'm pretty sure are, yeah, indie dyers. So I've just got scrap yarn sort of around that size. That's one I dyed myself ages ago. Another one I dyed myself ages ago, but I didn't like how all the colours. I like how it looks when you crochet it but when you knit it it personally I didn't like it um, another one that I did ages ago these are ones I did when I very first started dyeing yarn another one I did ages ago lovely bright green and yeah it is that bright <laughs> this would look really nice in a pair of gloves or something actually but I tried see this one here was a full ball I tried not to use full ones I tried to just use the scrap ones but there was a few I sort of went, I'm really not going to get to using those, so they can go into my scrap blanket. So yeah, really happy with that. It's so, You can't tell, but it's so soft and squishy. I love it. So I'm using a 4.5mm crochet hook. I think that's about a G size. I think that's about a G size crochet hook. Um, so you would normally use a 4mm, but I wanted to have loose attention so it's nice and drapey. And yeah, that's really cool. And this is living in my sun jellies bag. This is huge, this bag, as you can see. It's plastic and has a base, lovely handles from sun jellies. So I'll put a link for you for that one. Any links that you want or need will be in the description. Actually, no, they won't be in the description box. There will be a link to my website where you can find the show notes and I'll put all the links on my website. So that's the first one. I've got like I'm surrounded by bags. But that's a knitted one. Oh, so I do have two other knitted cardigans on the go. They are both my V-necked cardigan. Um, I'll insert a photo here so you can see the pattern. But the ones I'm making are going to have long sleeves. So you would have just seen a photo of my pink v-neck cardigan that I made with a floor, bleh, a four ply yarn which is equivalent to a fingering weight yarn that's an Australian four ply not the US four ply which is completely different uh, yeah it's a fingering weight yarn um, and that was made by made by that was made by me <laughs> the yarn was by Vintage Pearls I think the colour was made to measure and I'll put a link for that one in the show notes um, yeah, so I'm making two more of those, but I'm using four ply for one of them, so a fingering weight for one, 
and I'm using a 8 ply or a double knit yarn for the other one. The 4 ply one is blue and grey. Surprise, surprise, because that's my favourite colours. Um, but I'm moving house at the moment. You can't really tell on this what you can see here, but we're moving house and there's stuff everywhere. Seriously, if you ever moved house, you'll know what I mean. There's stuff everywhere in this house, like packed in boxes and stuff. And I've actually packed away some of my crochet items, so that got packed away and I can't remember what box it went in. So I've got the other four ply one, which is blue and grey, and then I've got a double knit one, which is equivalent to the eight ply, and that is grey yarn, and I'm doing rainbow with that one. So the rainbow one I'm using two McValley yarns, and the four ply one, which is blue and grey, I'm using uh, Meraki Studio yarn, which is a New Zealand indie dye, and two McValley yarns is an Australian indie dye. So I can't really show you those ones. I thought I'd left them out for this video, but I didn't. So next up is works in progress. Works in progress. I have my awesome pink fluffy pom pom on my girl so sheepy bag. I love this bag. It's got the sugar skulls on. It. I don't know if Z's watching, but Z's probably gonna love this bag too. Very cool. And it has white lining, which is great, so you can see things inside. So this one is just a pattern that I've made up. I have written it down. It's very simple. Um, so if I want to duplicate it, I can. I may tweak it a little bit because if you've seen my, I think it's called Easy Cow. I'll insert a photo of that. It's a crocheted version. And I thought, I wonder if I can knit it. So it's made on 5mm high, high sharp. It's got my little point projects on there because these are sharp. So 5mm high, high sharps with a DK weight yarn. This yarn, where is it? It's just about all used up. This yarn was a yarn that um, four, so myself and three friends all picked a colour and we put it all together and it's called Best Friends. Um, it's working out really pretty. It's starting to pull a little bit now because I'm working in the round here, but I don't mind how it's um, pulling there, so that's good. So it's basically a triangle. It does still need blocking. I haven't blocked it. It's basically the triangle, so the triangle sits like that on you, and then this part is a cow. But the triangle on this is quite long because I only increased once on each side. So I might make another version and increase twice on each side so it gets wider quicker. Um, and just play with the back of it. That's where it joins at the back. I'm going to play with that. and um, I won't know how it sort of sits until it's finished. But I think that that back bit there, the join, is too close together. It's basically just joined in the round. But I think maybe I need to have a bit of a gap there to make it sit nicer. But we'll see. So yeah, I'm loving how that's working out. I'm hoping to get this one finished because I do need these knitting needles for a, for a next project, which I have the yarn for and I'll show you. I'm sorry if I'm rushing. I am actually rushing because I want to get a video done that I will have so much to do, like packing, cleaning. Yeah, so I'm sorry if it's a little bit rushed. So that's in that bag. And also in this bag, I have... Ooh. It's all right. I thought I'd pull stitches off. I don't have the yarn label, I think it actually got ripped or something, but this is Cascade 220 Superwash, uh, it's roughly about a DK yarn, it's just a light, sort of a babyish blue. A friend of mine, Elena, was making a baby hat, she's learning to knit, and one of her first projects was a baby hat, and I'd, I had never made a baby hat before, I've made plenty of adult ones. It was just so cute when she was making it, so oh, I had to cast one on. I did make a pink one, which I finished, and that one again is packed in a box somewhere. Where? I have no idea. So I cast on a blue one as well, because I thought that was cute. And this yarn, I've had, and the pink one that I did was the same yarn. I've had this laying around for ages, like over a year, and just didn't know what to do with it. And I thought, oh, that's going to look awesome. So I think it will fit about an eighth month old. 
I figured I'd just go for a bit of a bigger size to use up more yarn mainly and you cast on with a 3.5 mil needle and then you change to a 4 for the hat so I've got my 4 millimeters these are also high high sharps these things are great they stop you from stabbing yourself when it's in your project bag but also stops the stitches falling off and the pattern for that it is actually a pattern it's a free pattern on Ravelry excuse my piece of paper that's all crunched up and it was from a website and it's Mama's Stitchery Projects I'm going to show you that bit I don't know if that's the actual website but I will leave a link to the Ravelry uh, pattern and you can see there you can make it in different sizes I'm pretty sure it's a free pattern so I won't show you anything else just in case it's not but I don't remember buying any baby hat patterns so but yeah so you can make it all the way from premium size up to adult size and this pattern uses a DK yarn or that's an 8 ply same as an 8 ply and, and yeah and it uses different decreasing which I wasn't used to and it really threw me but it's really easy to do I'm not going to tell you too much about that pattern. I'm pretty sure it's free, but don't want to get in trouble. So that's also living in that um, Girl So Sheepy project bag. You have to check out her project bags. They are so cute. I'm sorry, I don't know if you're watching, but I cannot remember your name. But I know you've got a podcast, and I like to watch your podcast too. So put all those, Claire, when you're editing, put all those links in. So that's that one. Next up is a project oh, that I started in January and I'm pretty sure it was the 12th and I only know that because I looked at my Ravelry page this morning and it's a pattern by a New Zealand uh, designer called Libby and her business name is Truly Myrtle and she's on Ravelry and she also has a podcast but it's an audio podcast but she's really lovely to listen to so I love to hop on her website and watch her uh, listen sorry to her podcast which are really great and she talks about all sorts of things and um, sometimes she does interviews with people so you get to learn about other things like there was a lady a couple of ladies at hand dye yarn and there was a lady that actually has the yarn factory Marie from Skeins Skeins yarn she was there too Ooh, she was there that she was on the podcast so this is called the oatmeal let me get this right so this is a paid for pattern so I'm not going to show you it's called oatmeal and I'm trying to show you the pattern without showing you the pattern and this is the shape that the jumper will be so that's what it will look like and I chose to use uh oh now my pages are all out of order sort that later. Uh, I chose to use silver lining. Oops. Whoa, that was a bit close. Silver lining and this is from Skeins, the lady I was just talking about, Marie, that has her own shop. That's their website. I think my nails are clean. Yep, not too bad. And that's the yarn and it's so, so soft and squishy. It's 100% New Zealand Merino. Uh, 50 grams and 109 meters but this stuff is amazing guys it's so soft so that's my yarn and you, I think I'm using a four millimeter knitting needle let me just sort of untangle it from the yarn and I'm gonna insert a photo as well just in case you can't really see it on this video my progress that I had the other day before I started the second sleeve so it's a v-neck sweater I would call it a jumper it's an it's a v-neck jumper and it's worked bottom up and here it is Oops. it has a garter band on the wrist 
and it has a garter band on the bottom and it will also have a garter V neck and I've got my sleeve for my stitch markers to remind me how many increases I've done here's a close up of the yarn, I'm hoping that's working and love it, absolutely love this pattern I have been knitting for two years and there's many stitches I've never done I've never done wrap and turn I've never done a, I had never done a slip slip knit uh, what else are the stitches I do actually plan to do a review on this pattern because I find that people ask me how the pattern was and I go oh yeah it was great but you might want to know more information so how I found it um, being sort of an advanced beginner I would say I wouldn't say intermediate before I tried this pattern I don't know now that I've done this if I'm intermediate but uh, it was it's got one two three four five yarn balls so five being hardest and one being the easy and it was a number two so I learned how to do make one right to make one left and all these other things that I'd never done before and the descriptions in the pattern I hardly ever used YouTube the descriptions in the pattern were so great that I was able to do it um, practice a lot but I was able to do it so it's a very I was very addicted to this I still am very addicted to this pattern And I had modifications because I'm really tall. I'm not really tall, I'm only 5'7", but I've got a long torso and everything is too short on me. So I had to make some adjustments. So yeah, that's that pattern. Love it, love it, love it. It's so soft. I would actually be sad when I finish working with this yarn because it is so nice. It's really kind of a yarn be buttery it's really soft and smooth and it's lovely and warm when it's on your lap can you tell I'm a little bit obsessed a little bit obsessed with the pattern and the yarn too and I think that's why I like working on it because the yarn and the pattern just they just work together I'm not using the yarn in the pattern because um, I pretty much had this yarn in my stash so that's why I use that so that is my works in progress. I have one more thing to show you and this is my what I kind of call dream knitting what I want to make but don't have time because I'm very busy. Um, same goes with crochet I find crochet patterns that I think oh I want to make that but I can't because I'm too busy crocheting for work. But you know you have to just find the time to do it so at the moment so I don't have many crochet items to show you because most of the ones I do are for videos and plus they're already packed in a box so recently we had the oversized cow from simply collectible crochet from Selena and also the glamorous wrap which is a red heart pattern and I'll insert photos of those here so you can see what they were. And yeah, you can go and check out the video because they are really cool. Love both designs. So my dream knitting, and I've even printed out the pattern, is called Homestead. It's a shawl, it's a beginner and intermediate level, and it's by Marsha. I'm probably going to butcher this last name. I think it's Abuki. I'm going to show you. My, my pattern looks a little bit different to the one that you get because I took some photos out so I didn't need to print them all. Because I do a lot of printing for work, I try and sort of make the pattern not have as many pictures. Is that showing up? It's not. So I will insert a photo here and you can see this pattern picture there. I'm pretty sure that's on Ravelry and if it is I'll insert a, a photo now so you can check it out and see what it's going to look like. So 
it is a painful pattern so I'm not going to show you any more but uh, it, yeah it's a beginner intermediate so I figured I can do that and I am going to do so Sarah I think it's Sarah Hepworth I think that's how you say her last name uh, on Instagram put up this shawl she says she's made the shawl and she put up this shawl and I was like oh I need that in my life <laughs> and she used a navy blue as her main color and rainbow minis as her contrast color and I will insert a photo now so you can see it Isn't it amazing? So when I went to the unwind, uh, unwind retreat in the beginning of March, I purchased some yarn, especially to make the shawl. So I did want to do the navy blue because it looks amazing. But I thought, apart from not being able to find any yarn there, I just thought, okay, I'll go with what I know. So this is actually a grey. That's looking quite purple on my viewfinder. But that's a grey gradient. And this is four ply yarn, which is fingering weight, and it's by Hollyberry Designs. And she is a gorgeous person and also a New Zealand dyer. And this is called Ash. It's a hundred grams. It's a super wash merino fingering, and there's 355 meters. Ooh, I think I need four four hundred for the pattern. We'll see how that works. You can see her details there. So this is going to be my main colour. I've just realised because I read the pattern the other day. I need 400 metres. Sheesh. Might be uh, asking Holly to dye me up some more. So for my contrast colours, I've got two of these packs. I'm going to try not to make as much crinkling as possible. And these are... We'll put it over here so it's maybe not as loud. These are rainbow minis and they are sparkle. I don't know if you can see the sparkle through the bag. And it came with a packet of stitch markers, so I'll be using those in the pattern. And it's six times 20 gram mini skeins, 80 meters per 200 uh, per, per 20 grams. And this is a superwash merino as well, and it's got stellina in it, which is the sparkle. And this is from Virginia, and I got to meet Virginia at the Unwind Festival from Orange Tail Yarns. And Virginia is a lovely, lovely lady, and we had a good old laugh. And the first time I tried Virginia's yarns, so I was very excited, because you know who's going to be there, um, who's trading. So I was very excited to try some of her yarns. Um, I do also have two other skeins that I bought from Virginia, which were a sparkle sock. I think, it, no, it wasn't a sparkle sock. A speckled sock so I'll insert photo of that here I don't have a very good photo of that it's quite blurry but you'll get the gist so I got that and I also got some yarn the reason I can't show you these is because they've been gifted to somebody and the other one was from Alice from bleating art yeah from bleating art as in bleating heart yeah bleating art yarns and she is Auntie Alice loves to knit. I'm sure that's right. If that's wrong, I'll put it across the screen here anyway, so you can see. And she's on Instagram, and I think she's got Facebook too. Um, but yeah, so back to the shawl. I'm so scattered because of all this moving stuff. I've got this as my main color, and I have Sparkle Minis for my contrast color. I do have two packets. Of the sparkle minis sorry I can't stand that crinkling when it's in your ears on the, if you've got earphones on and that's gonna be in my shawl so I'm really hoping I'm gonna have to have a quick read of the pattern I'm hoping that the 400 I'm supposed to have 400 meters and this is only 355 so I'm hoping that's enough um, if not I'll have to jiggle a little bit so yeah that is my dream knitting and I won't get to that for quite a while because the, the works in progress that you've seen, I actually want to 
finish those before I start this shawl. So this shawl is in my project bag. And I think I got this project bag from... I think it's called Knit and Stitch Bits. I'm going to put across the screen who it's from. And all the links to everybody's Etsy and whatever's and Instagram will be... Anything I've talked about basically will actually be on my website with all the, the um, show notes. I also treated myself to an extra set of cable needles for my higher, higher, sharp interchangeables that I've got. I think there's about five different sizes in there. Because I find myself using multiple projects, as you can see. So I need more than a couple of cables. So that's it for me. Sorry about the horrible background. I think this is usually the background that you get. I don't know why I'm fixing my hair talking to you because you've just seen me sit here for the last 20 minutes, however long it's been. So yeah, that is my what's in progress and any finished items I can't even show you because they're all packed in a box somewhere. Ugh. You know, it's horrible packing, but I'm not looking forward to the other end when you have to unpack. The things we do. So if you're watching this video, I don't even know when I'm going to get this video edited or uploaded. Um, if I'm quiet online with crochet tutorial content, that's why, because we're moving house and we're not going to be set up in our um, next location, like properly set up with my office and everything for quite a number of weeks. So yeah, it'd be nice if it was like a very quick transition, but it's not. So if I'm a little bit quiet, that's why. I'm going to try and film as much of these vlog style videos as I can so that at least you get some sort of, some sort of clear, <laughs> some sort of video to watch. Uh, yeah. So I hope you're having a fantastic week. Leave what you're making in the comments section. I would love to hear about it. Uh, what colours are you using? Any yarns that you've discovered? Any new yarns you've discovered? Um, so yeah. Hope you're having a great week and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching. Happy crochet. Bye. Hi guys and welcome to another video.